So in this video, I'm going to show you my three favorite Lightroom tips, tricks, and secrets to create amazing images. So let's dive into it. Hello, if you've never been here before, my name is Fabian and I'm a fine art photographer currently based in London. And if you're interested in all things photography, Fujifilm gear, photo walks and editing tips, you have come to the right place. Do subscribe to the channel and hit the notification button so you won't miss the next videos. And so, my favorite Lightroom tricks. So, I was on Clubhouse the other day in a conversation about photo editing and somebody asked a question about how to do a specific action on Lightroom Mobile. And everybody, literally every photographer in the room said it couldn't be done. So I raised my hand and actually, you can. And it's easy. And minds were blown. I'll tell you all as a bonus tip at the end of this video. So stick around for that. And now let's open Lightroom, shall we? So let's kick off this list of my three favorite Lightroom tips with a simple one. Anyone taking photos will have heard of the rule of thirds in one way or another. And I have a whole blog post covering it. But in a nutshell, it's a way to draw two evenly spaced horizontal lines and two evenly spaced vertical lines to create four intersections. The idea being that if you put your subject of focal interest in one of the intersections or along one line, your image will become more dynamic and pleasing to the eye. And it has become a rule because in general, this is actually true. So when you edit an image in Lightroom, you can open the crop tool by going to crop overlay in the right toolbar or by pressing R and you will see this rule of thirds grid overlaying your photo. And this will help you compose the image to fulfill the purposes of the rule of thirds. And you can see here Lightroom showing you those lines and intersections that I mentioned. And you can use this to help you compose your next Instagram post, for example. If you choose the four by five ratio here, you can then compose to have the focal point falling on one of the points of interest of the rule of thirds. Let's say, for example, I want the bridge to be aligned with one of the lines in the rule of thirds and this to be in the center. When finished, I can either press enter on the keyboard or close the panel with the close button. And this is a non-destructive edit, so I can always reopen the tool by pressing R and adjust the cropping later or change the composition altogether. And this is quite straightforward and helpful, but it's not much of a trick, is it? Well, not much so far, but there's a lot more that you can do from here. The rule of thirds is only one of the many composition overlays that you can use to better your photos and position your focal point. While this is open, if you press O, you can switch between various composition helpers, where there is triangles, a different rule of thirds, the golden ratio, etc. And with some of these overlays, if you press Shift O, you can then change the orientation of these overlays to suit your image. And if you press X on the keyboard, you can switch between landscape and portrait crop. Again, when finished, you press Enter on the keyboard or close the panel with a close button. And so these are the quick and easy ways you can change your composition and abide by the rule of thirds or decide if you want to apply a completely different composition. And there is one hidden feature in Lightroom that is only available when you apply a local adjustment, which could be a gradient or a brush. And for the love of me, I don't know why Adobe decided to make this so irrelevant. Because this is actually one of the most powerful editing tools in the Lightroom arsenal. And it's been there for years now, just waiting to be discovered. I'm talking about range. If I open, for example, the linear gradient, at the bottom of the gradient editing panel, there is this range option, which is set to off by default. So let's apply a linear gradient, and this is set to off. And when you tick it, it will reveal a new menu where you can select what you, what you want to play with. And the options are color, luminance, or depth. And luminance is the one that I use pretty much in every single photo that I edit. So let's see what we can do with this range. Let's say that I want to apply a gradient mask here to recover some detail from the, some of the shadows. I will drag the mask from the bottom up to where the shadows end, and then I start editing. But as you can see, the edit is also applied to the area of highlights included in the mask. Of course, I could always brush this out, but it's very imprecise and it's quite time consuming. 
But if you take the range box though, and you go to luminance, you have two new sliders here, range and smoothness. Now I'm gonna take show luminance mask so you can see what I'm doing. So here you can see that the mask is applied to everything, the shadows and then also the highlights, everything that's in the range of the linear gradient. Now I'm gonna use the same mask, but refine it only to apply my edits to the area I want these edits applied. And in this case, I want them applied to the shadows. So I drag this down and you can see how now these has moved from the highlights and the mask is only applied to the shadows. So let me remove the mask here. And let's say that I want to increase the exposure. I'm gonna go extreme so you can see the difference. Now you can see that I'm increasing the exposure on the dark areas without touching these clouds. So if I close this now, this is the before and this is the after. Now obviously this is very extreme, I don't like this edit, I, I wouldn't use this edit. But it's just to show you that the modifications have been applied to the dark areas without affecting the highlights at all. And you can see how this edge is very, very irregular. So even with a brush, this would have taken quite a while. And I can do the same for the clouds. If I want them whiter, I can drag this mask to include all the, all the clouds. Tick range, choose luminance, and then go all the way up to only select the very brightest part. And I can even make this more precise, just get the highlights by moving the smoothness. You can see this is only going to affect the highlights in the mid part of the image. And I want this even whiter. So here it is, I'm increasing the white. I'm gonna increase the highlights so it's more clear on YouTube even though the image is gonna be rubbish. And then close, and here it is. This is the before, and this is the after. And I have not touched the foreground, the dark foreground at all. Oh, and by the way, you can also do this while using a gradient on the entire photo. All you have to do is drag the gradient outside of the image and then you can apply your edits to the whole picture, but only to the area you specify based on luminance. And color works in a similar way. You get this eyedropper tool that you can use to select a color, either by clicking or dragging, and this will sample colors within the mask area. And you can shift click to add more colors to the mask, and then you can apply your edits. And here you can also shift the color to a different one using the hue slider. So here is the before, here is the after, and you can see I only apply the edits to the colors that I chose. So the temple stays intact and the sky stays intact. Now depth on the other hand will use AI to let you apply edits to elements of the image that have different focus. And this works particularly well with photos captured with modern smartphones because they have depth match support. The big difference here is that you can operate on different areas based on the focus, which I find fascinating. So here you can see all the different layers based on the focus on the image. And one quick example would be to desaturate the background and make the flower here really pop. So I'm gonna play with the range and the smoothness to only select the background, which is the area which is less in focus. And then I, will, and then I can desaturate the background. And you can really go crazy with this. And these are all the different ways that you can play with the range mask in Lightroom. But this is not the only hidden feature. Do you know that there is a magic button in Lightroom? One that will open all sorts of possibilities and will forever change the way you edit. It's called the Alt key. Now it's option if you use a Mac, of course. And think of it as the Narnia wardrobe. It's there in plain sight and there is nothing too interesting about it. Well, if anything, it's even a tad confusing because it changes name depending on your operating system. But it's actually the gate into a whole new world. And depending on the path you take, this world can be a dull gray or a punchy black and white, or you can immerse your photo in very, very trippy colors. But okay, enough fluff. Let's see what this is all about. Now I'm only going to show you a few examples here, but in Lightroom, you can pretty much use the Alt Option key on anything that is clickable, even the scroll bars. 
When you have lots of photos in your library, you can jump further down by pressing Alt Option and then clicking on an area of the scroll bars. And you will jump there straight away. No need to slide or drag up and down the scroll bar. You can simply Alt click and then Lightroom will jump to the spot where you clicked. Now, to be fair, this is a macOS feature available in every app, but it really works great with, with your big photo libraries. And in develop mode, you can use Alt, for example, in the basic adjustment panel. Here you can say, check the clipping for highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks. So if I press Alt Option key and then slide the whites slider, I can see where it starts to blow up and I lose details in the, in the whites. So if I now release, you can see that this is really blown out. Similarly, if your image is way too bright, you can use the slider to recover the parts of the image that have lost details. Now, this may not always be possible. Let's say that a spot in the image is actually white, so it's going to stay like that. But in many cases, you can recover some details in highlights. So this is for the whites and this is for the blacks. And here I'm clipping the blacks and you can see that the image is now a black mass and I lost all the details in the shadows. But then I can slide back to the right and recover the details. And here it is. Or you can use it to help you with sharpening as this works with all the sliders in the details panel. For example, you can see on the fly how much sharpening is applied via the amount slider. If I press the Alt key, it's going to turn black and white, and you can see how much sharpening I'm applying to the image. Now, it may not be visible with the YouTube compression, but on your screen it will be. Or you can check my favorite, which is masking, because you can apply selective masking to make sure that you only sharpen the bits that need to be sharpened and leave out the rest. So if I press the Alt Option key and slide the masking, it's going to turn black and white, and everything that's in white is going to be sharpened, and I don't want the sky to be sharpened in this case. So I'm sliding all the way to the right until the sky looks clean. And you can try and experiment with the Alt Option key on other sliders as well. And this will really help you refine all your images. And when you've done all your edits, maybe you want to reset them because you're not happy with them and you want to experiment with something else. If you press the Alt key, you will have the option to reset the changes by pressing the title. It changes the title from here, for example, Tone to Reset Tone. And you click on it, and it will reset every single option. And this is also related to the quick bonus mind-blowing secret. Remember at the beginning of this video, I was talking about this conversation on Clubhouse. As it happened, somebody asked about using the old key on Lightroom Mobile, specifically to see the clipping in highlights and shadows, because that would be super useful. And everybody said it couldn't be done, because there is no physical keyboard, and therefore there is no old key. And well, guess what? There is. And the feature has been available since 2017, so it's nothing new. And let me show you here on the iPad. And so now I'm on Lightroom Mobile for the iPad, and this is available on Lightroom Mobile for the iPhone as well. The way to use the Alt key on Lightroom Mobile is you just open any of the panels. Like for example, I'm opening Light right now. And I can start dragging the highlights and then hold with my thumb on the other hand on the image and I can see the clipping on the highlights. And same with the shadows. I start sliding the shadows and then I can see the clipping by just holding the thumb on the image. So it's basically a two fingers operation. It works on the details as well. So you can start sharpening the image and see how much sharpening is applied. And then even better for the masking. So you start sliding and then hold with your thumb to see how the mask is applied. So it really is this easy. And so this is it, my three super secret Lightroom weapons that help me in my editing workflow. I hope you learned something new and I hope that you found this useful. And if that happened, don't forget to like this video and maybe consider subscribing to the channel for more secrets, more tips and more tricks. 
And so thank you very much and I'll see you soon.